So, hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. This is our third video for the Accounting for Property, Plant, and Equipment Part 3. In the past videos, we talked about PFRS 6 or Exploration and Evaluation. And then we talked about PASS 23 for Borrowing Costs. This video will focus on government grants which is governed by PASS 20. So this standard is used if the government gave you some form of assistance or grant for you to be able to purchase property, plant, and equipment items. So if you want to learn about PASS 20 government grants, so we will start with our third part of accounting for property, plant, and equipment. So hi guys, again this is the third part of property, plant, and equipment and this video will focus on government grants. So government grants are governed by PAS 20 and it is defined by PAS 20 as assistance by government in the form of transfers of resources to an entity in return for past or future compliance with certain conditions relating to the operating activities of the entity. They exclude those forms of government assistance which cannot reasonably have a value placed upon them and transactions with government which cannot be distinguished from the normal trading transactions of the entity. So, hindi kasale as government grant yung mga normal trading transactions with the government. So, government grants are recognized including non-monetary grants at fair value. It should only be recognized when there is reasonable assurance that the entity will comply with the conditions attaching them and the grants will be received or is receivable. There are two types of government grants. We have grants related to assets and grants related to income. So grants to related to assets are grants whose primary condition is that an entity qualifying for them should purchase, construct, or otherwise acquire long-term assets. So simple lang yung condition. Dapat mag-purchase, construct ng long-term assets. Grants related to income are those grants other than those related to assets. To account for grants related to assets, you recognize as income over the periods and in the proportions in which depreciation on those assets is charged or over the periods which bear the cost of meeting the obligation. So for example, you depreciate the asset for 5 years, then yung income related doon sa government grant is to be recognized over 5 years then. For grants related to income, it should be deferred and recognized as income in the same period as the relevant expense. Matching concept lang tayo. Dito, imamatch mo yung income sa depreciation. Dito, imamatch mo yung income sa relevant expense. So, for presentation, grants related to assets, you can either present it as a deferred income or a liability account Tapos dahan-dahan siya maging income or the grant should be deducted in arriving the carrying amount of the asset. So pag ginamit mo yung deferred income, ang tawag natin dyan gross method, pag binawas mo na agad sa carrying amount of the asset, that's net method. For grants related to income, you can either use a separate income or under a general heading such as other income or deducted in, re in the related expense. So, gross or net method pa din. What if there is a repayment or um, sinabi ng government na ibalik mo yung grant? no? So, when there is a repayment, we account for it as a change in accounting estimate or account for it prospectively. So, for grants related to asset, either you increase the carrying amount of the asset kapag initially ginawa mo siyang deduction sa carrying amount, or reduce the deferred income balance kapag ang initial mong ginawa ay to record it as deferred income. 
a cumulative additional depreciation that would have been recognized to date as an expense in the absence of the grant should be immediately recognized as an expense. So for grants related to income, apply first against any unamortized deferred income or where no deferred income exists, recognized immediately as expense. Let's have an example. ABC Incorporated purchased a polishing machine for 6,600,000 on January 1, 2019 and received a government grant of 600,000 towards the capital cost. The machine was to be depreciated on a straight line basis over 10 years and was estimated to have a residual value of 500,000 at the end of this period. So guys, this is a grant related to asset. Question is, compute for the income from government grant that will be recognized at the end of 2019 if the grant is initially treated as deferred income. Letter B, compute for the depreciation expense that will be recognized at the end of 2019 if the grant is initially treated as reduction of the machine's cost. And letter C, compute for the depreciation expense that will be recognized at the end of 2021 if the grant became repayable on January 1, 2021. Assume that the grant is initially treated as reduction of the machine's cost. Okay, so let's start with letter A. Depreciation expense for the year, treat it initially as deferred income. So pag treat it as deferred income, the initial cost of the asset will remain at 6,600,000 less the residual value of 500,000. The depreciable cost is 6,100,000 divided by the useful life of 10 years. Therefore, the depreciation every year is 610,000 pesos. Dahil magre-recognize ka ng deferred income amounting to 600,000 divided by 10 years, yung income na i-recognize mo every year ay 60,000 pesos. Therefore, ang net effect sa profit or loss is 610 expense, 60,000 income, ang net effect ay 550,000. For letter B, what if we treat it initially as reduction to cost? So, the reduction to cost, the initial cost will now be 6 million kasi ima-minus mo na yung grant from the 6,600,000. Less the residual value of 500,000, the depreciable cost is 5,500,000. Divided by the useful life of 10 years, so ang depreciation mo every year ay 550,000. Wala kang income from government grant kasi wala kang ni-recognize na deferred income. And the total effect on profit or loss is 550,000, but all as depreciation expense. So what if naging repayable on 2021 and initially treated as reduction of machine's cost? So kapag initially treated as reduction of machine cost, the initial cost would be 6 million, di ba? Kasi 6 million 600,000 minus 600,000 less accumulated depreciation of 1,100,000, that is for two years, 2019 and 2020, each 550,000. So ang carrying amount niya as of this year, ay Janu of January 1, 2021, is 4,900,000. And then, i-add back natin yung repayment, which is 600,000, kasi ibabalik mo. Then, ang new carrying amount is 5,500,000. Less the residual value of 500,000, the new depreciable cost is 5 million pesos. Therefore, the remaining life is 8 years. Therefore, the depreciation for 2021 is 625,000 pesos. Again, this is to be accounted for as a change in accounting estimate or accounted prospectively. So that's it guys for government grants. It's your time now to test your knowledge. If you know the answer to this question, you may comment your answer to the video. On January 2, 2019, Odette Company received a grant related to a factory building. The total amount of the grant was 18 million pesos. Odette Company acquired the building from an industrialist 
identified by the government. If a debt company did not purchase the factory building which is located in the slums of the city, it would have been repossessed by a government agency. A debt company purchased the building for 54 million pesos. The useful life of the building is not considered to be more than three years, mainly due to the fact that the previous owner did not properly maintain it. Assuming the grant is treated as a reduction of the gross carrying amount of the asset, what is the carrying value of the building in the December 31, 2019 Statement of Financial Position? A. 18 million, B. 24 million, C. 36 million, or D. 54 million. So that's it guys for this video tutorial on accounting for government grants in accordance with past 20. Thank you for watching and listening to this video. If nagustuhan nyo yung video, please like, comment, share this video sa inyong mga friends, classmates, or anyone na kakilala nyo. If hindi pa kayo nakaka-subscribe, please subscribe to my channel guys for more accounting videos. So that's it for today guys. See you on the next video. Bye!